I'm so excited about God's Word today. I want you to turn in the Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. This is what the Bible says. It says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now this writer could have said, don't neglect prayer, don't neglect preaching, don't neglect all these different spiritual disciplines, but this writer said, don't neglect the gathering. Don't neglect the meeting because the gathering and the meeting of the body of Christ, let me tell you, it's sacred, it's holy, it's set apart, it's consecrated for Almighty God. You know, I'm just getting finished um, with, our, with our doctorate of ministry, and this was a three-year process. And in this three-year process, we were to choose one topic, one subject to study that's relevant to our mission, relevant to our ministry. So the topic that I chose, you know, I've been the lead pastor for the past few years with my wife, Sarah. So I thought that in order to lead well, I probably have to know how to lead the church facility, the church building, the place of the gathering in the best way possible. So today, I'm just gonna kind of talk to you about my dissertation what I've been studying these past three years. Is that okay with you? Is that good? I don't really care if it is, I'm gonna do it anyway. But the title of what I'm gonna speak to you on today is Sacred Places, Sacred Places. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. God, we love you, we praise your name. God, I pray that you would change us today. Allow your word to wash over us. We love you, God. Thank you for SC Church. Thank you for every person in this place. Bless us. And everybody said, hey, give someone a high five and you can be seated. This season for, for my household, it's a season of graduation. It's kind of funny. But um, I got a Daisy. She's graduating K-4. Oh, so sweet, right? And then Doc He's graduating K-5. Oh, so sweet. And then Noah, she's in sixth grade. She's graduating to the high school campus. And then Kennedy, she's in eighth grade, the eighth grader going to high school. And then even the parents, Sarah and I, we just finished our doctorate of ministry. So there's so many graduations happening in our household. There's some probably some spiritual relevance to this. I can pull it out another time, but it's just a season we're going through right now. But I'm reminded of SC College, which is our college here at Shreveport Community Church. And if you didn't know this, we have a fully accredited college right here through Southeastern University. It's called SC College. And what that is, is if you're coming out of high school, you can come to SC College and go a year in our studies, and then every bit of those credits, they transfer to LSU or to Florida, any other major college, because it's fully accredited. And it's not just for high school kids going into college, it's actually for 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50, 60, however old you are, if you say, you know what? I wanna get my undergraduate degree. I want to get my master's in ministerial leadership or my master's in counseling like Quentin just got, or I wanna go back to school like Charisma or Heather, and I just wanna honor the graduates of SC College right now. Can you put your hands together for Charisma and Heather? They just finished, and it's a monumental achievement, and they graduated. And I wanna tell you this, we went to Southeastern, and guys, we walked across that stage. Some of you guys, Y'all told me, y'all watched, God bless you, for like a couple hours as they called 700 names, people walking across the stage. And somehow, I don't know how it happened, but Sarah and I were like on the second to last row. So we were like number 700 or something. But Shreveport, guys, we took over Lakeland for a night. And I want you to put that picture up right now of, um, of what happened at 
so this is around 40 people that we have from Shreveport. There's Sarah Bonner, previously Sarah Otbrook, and Charisma, Heather, and myself, and Sarah, that's our family. Can we put our hands together for what God did? Isn't that great? We just had the best time. I wanna tell you this. If you're interested in SC College, it's really one of our value points of our life, my wife and I, to be lifelong learners. And I believe as Christians, we are all to be lifelong learners, amen? We never stop learning about Christ, but if you're interested, it's really free to apply, and we have a booth out front right now. It's application time, and I just so encourage you to come be a part if you can do that. Now, I'm getting into my dissertation, really what I've been studying these last few years, and the topic of my dissertation is this. Church campus enhancement for maximum ministry effectiveness. So the problem that I found is that in church, the gathering and the church building is less sacred and less holy than it was compared to years past. So the question is, how do we restore the sacredness and the holiness to the gathering, to the house of Almighty God? My research question is this. What effect exists between the existence enhancement and expansion of a church facility and the life experience of the Shreveport Community Church congregation and the Shreveport community. While I'm talking today, I'm trying to fit in a 100-page document into 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna give you a few highlights of what I was privileged to study over these past few years. But you're gonna hear this many times today. Existence, enhancement, and expansion. That is the pattern that God calls the church of Jesus Christ to walk through, but for us as Christians, individuals, to walk closer to Almighty God. Like I said in Hebrews, the writer said, we cannot neglect the meeting together, the gathering, because the gathering is holy, it's sacred, it's set apart, it's consecrated for Almighty God. So in proving this, or not proving it, in engaging in this topic, I was able to get into chapter two. And chapter two is the longest chapter, but it's the theological framework and just really engaging with contemporary sources, which was my favorite chapter of all. Why? Because it's the research. I just love the research. But through my research, I found the scriptures provide countless examples of people who have built structures to honor God. You can see that all throughout the Bible, and really still today, we come together and we build places to exalt the name of Jesus. If one is to explore human nature as it relates to worshiping God, people have consistently valued creating a physical place to exalt and to worship the name of Jesus. So in this, I really had some foundational verses that set the foundation for my research. And here are a couple of the foundational verses. Psalm 24 and one. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Leviticus 11.45 says this. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. How many of you know we serve a holy God? A God who is holy created a world that is holy. So the earth and humanity are living in a fallen state, yes. But the earth and humanity, we have the opportunity to be redeemed as holy. How many of you are thankful for the redemption of Almighty God? So here's the thing. The argument should not be what can be viewed as holy and what cannot be categorized as holy. The objective should always to be to view all people and all places as being created by a holy God as holy. They're already holy. But we get to participate in the redemption of redeeming holy places and being a redeemed holy people. How many of you are redeemed by the blood of the lamb in this place? So here's the thing, and just right off the get-go, the Sabbath day it's not to be worshiped. 
The place of the gathering, absolutely not to be worshiped. And the gathering itself is not to be worshiped. Rather, all three are vital components to living an obedient life consecrated to Jesus and set apart for God's divine purpose. I wanna tell you this, that experiencing God's presence, it's not contingent on circumstance. And we see that the church of Jesus Christ, it cannot be silenced. If you look throughout history, you'll see the early church, right after Jesus was resurrected to sit at the right hand of the Father, the early church had no building to call their own. They weren't allowed to have buildings to be a place of worship. And the Roman government, they persecuted Christians, trying to snuff Christians out. But I love the fact that in the midst of persecution, in the midst of not ideal circumstances, the church wasn't killed, but the church of Jesus Christ, it thrived because nothing can silence the church of Jesus Christ. You wanna know what the answer for the world today is? I wanna tell you the answer is the church of Jesus Christ because light always defeats darkness and we are to arise and to shine and to say we are the church and we're here to exalt the name of Jesus. Come on, give God some praise because the church can't be silenced. So in establishing my theology, which is my biblical breakdown for the foundation of my study, I went through the scriptures and I was just, I mean, my whole goal and objective is to see how to lead facilities and sacred places, the buildings that God has given us the right way. So I studied three things. I studied sacred places, sacred facilities, and sacred altars. And that provided my theology and my path. I don't have time to get into even close to it, but I'm just gonna give you a few highlights. One of the sacred places that I was able to study was the earth. So as I said, God creates, and what he creates is holy. So God created the earth, and everything in it was holy. But then God created man, and then God enhanced the earth with the elements that were there and built the Garden of Eden. God placed the man in the Garden of Eden and said this, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So I want you to see this pattern even before the fall, we see the existence. God created the earth. We see the enhancement. God made the Garden of Eden. And we see the expansion plan. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Humanity was not limited to the Garden of Eden. God said, I want you to fill the earth. So before the fall, I want you to know God had in his heart the expansion plan for humankind. Now, of course, humanity fell. And I don't have time to get into all of it, but the places that I was able to study, humanity would experience God's presence in a place. Okay, in a place it was sacred and it was redeemed, but then all of a sudden, this horrible traumatic event would happen in that same place. But then God would redeem that same place again. And then a traumatic event would happen. Then God would cover it again until finally one walked the earth that would redeem every place on the earth. And Jesus finished it once and for all. So I love studying the places and the sacred, sacred locations because it shows us that we are an imperfect humanity engaging with a perfect God. If you think that the body of Christ, the objective is to come in here and be perfect, you've missed it, my friend, because there's not a perfect person in this place. The objective is to come in this place and exalt the name of Jesus. We fail, we have tough times, but we come back in this place and we are redeemed and we point to Jesus because how many of you know Jesus has covered it all? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Come on. The last sacred um, location that I studied was heaven. And heaven follows this same pattern. Because heaven was created, it exists, right? It's a holy place. I would say heaven's pretty holy. Then heaven, 
I would say it was enhanced when resurrected Savior took his seat at the right hand of the Father in heaven. But the expansion plan of heaven is this, that you and I have to look forward to an eternity with Almighty God, forever expanding our love for him, forever expanding our worship for him and our knowledge for Jesus Christ. So I just want you to see this pattern. Before the fall, existence, enhancement, expansion after the fall, and even for eternity, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I really enjoyed studying the sacred places. And then I got into the sacred facilities. Sacred facilities, oh, they're so powerful. I got to study Noah's Ark and the tabernacle and the temple. I only have time for one today, and that's the upper room. We're Pentecostals, right? Any, any Pentecostals in this place? Come on, somebody. So we gotta talk about the upper room. But the upper room is such a storied, sacred facility. Okay, many say that this, the upper room, is the first sacred facility of the church of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, he taught the disciples in this room. And they gathered around Jesus in this room and they exalted his name. Jesus had the Last Supper, showed them how to remember him in the upper room. Jesus washed the disciples' feet, showed them how to be the servant of all. And these are all the themes of really what happens in the church of Jesus Christ. After Jesus died and rose again, resurrected Jesus, appeared to the disciples in their fear in the upper room. Matthias was chosen to be an apostle in the upper room and then Come on, Pentecostal people. In the upper room, we waited. And as they waited, the Holy Spirit fell. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues. And from that place, they went and spread the gospel to the world. So I want you to see this pattern once again. Yes, the meeting existed where Jesus was there and they gathered around him to exalt his name. The enhancement of being there and waiting for the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fell, I'd say that's a pretty good enhancement. Thank you, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit filling them. But the expansion plan is this. You can argue from that sacred facility, the gospel was spread to the entire world. We wouldn't be here today if that didn't happen that day in that upper room. So what am I telling you? Part of your expansion plan. Part of your enhancement is that God intends for every single one of you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God intends for you to say, God, I surrender. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lead me with the Holy Spirit so then you're not limited to a place to experience God's presence in the meeting, but God fills you. And then every place you set your foot, you're claiming for Almighty God. Sacred holy locations at your home. Sacred locations at your business. Every place you go when you go to the restaurants, God has given you that power. And with that enhancement, anything is possible in the expansion plan of Almighty God. How many of you love the Holy Spirit in this place? Come on, just lift your hands right now with me and just say, Holy Spirit falls. Say that right now. Say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Say, Holy Spirit, lead me. And that's part of God's expansion plan. And, and the last thing I was able to study was sacred altars. Um, the patriarchs of the faith, it's, it's amazing how many patriarchs experience God's presence in a location, and then in that location, they would build an altar of gratitude, of thanksgiving, of forgiveness to Almighty God. Over and over again, we see this happen. And I'll tell you this, that every one of us have the opportunity where we walk to build spiritual altars to Almighty God, to claim the locations that we are for Jesus. What do we have to offer? We have our time, our talent, and our treasure. I love looking down at these giving containers because these are blessing management containers. Whenever you come down here and you give a, a money offering to God, you're making an altar 
to Jesus. When you walk out or you give online, that's an altar to Jesus. When you're serving on a Sunday morning or going to a community group, that's an altar to Almighty God. My favorite thing that I studied in this regard was the story of King David. King David disobeyed Almighty God. King David took his senses. God said, don't count the people, but David said, I gotta know how many people I've got, and he took his senses. And God said, well, it's done for you. I'm going to destroy everybody. I'm gonna kill your whole nation for dis disobeying me. So God sent an angel to destroy Israel. And on the way the angel was going, God had mercy in his spirit, and God stopped the angel from destroying Israel. And where the angel stopped was the threshing floor. The angel stopped and had mercy at the threshing floor. So David said, I'm gonna purchase the threshing floor and I'm gonna make an altar to Almighty God. So he went to the man that owned this location. He said, I wanna buy this location. And the man said, you're King David. I'll give it to you. I'll gladly give it to you. And I want you to miss this because this is what David said. David said, I will never give God something that cost me nothing. He said, I'm paying for this spot and I'm making an altar to Almighty God. And he bought it, he made an altar of forgiveness. God, forgive me of gratitude. Thank you for sparing me. And it cost him something dearly. And I wanna tell you this, it's time to get out of the Western mindset of the convenient Christianity where we just show up when it's convenient for us and it doesn't cost us anything. No, it's supposed to cost us something. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard to serve Almighty God because God delights when we give God our best. And today I just, I really wanna turn this towards the community groups out front. You say, oh, big surprise. You're talking about community groups again, Denny. Well, you're just gonna bring everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely I am. Today is our community group fair. We're gonna have our community group leaders out front. And it's God's will and the vision of this church, not that we do community groups, that we are a church of community groups. You understand, every single one of us, when we get closer to God, we should be getting closer to the body of Jesus Christ, to the gathering, not further away, no. Salvation, we have salvation, and we're born into the body of Christ. Last I checked, the body of Christ is the gathering of Jesus Christ right here in our midst. So these community groups, they're vital for us, why? Because it's life in the context of small groups. When you leave today, I just wanna tell you, yeah, you're saying, Denny, that's tough for me. Well, it should be. Denny, that's gonna cost me some time. Well, it should. When we give God some things, it should never be something that costs us nothing, but it should be our best. Are you kidding me? You're gonna give an altar to Almighty God that costs you nothing. You gotta remember the words of David. I would never give God something that cost me nothing. What's the definition of that? Well, it's stewarding what God has given. You can tell I'm a little fired up today and and I, I want to say it's, it's Alex's fault. It's Alex's fault. Yeah, it's his fault. He's been, he's been out for a couple weeks. And guys, when I say pre-service rally was fired up, he was walking on the walls. He was so pumped. But it's your fault. I'm pumped, man. Let's do this. So this is, in a, in a nutshell, my biblical theology, it reveals imperfect people interacting with a perfect God. The perfection of God's locational plans for humanity has been messy in every single place of God's establishment. However, through the imperfections of these places, facilities, and altars, God's providence has used every story in the masterpiece of God's redemption. And the sacred place is the place of gathering in the name of Jesus. Friends, we're in the sacred place today because we're gathering to exalt the name of Jesus. I wanna give you a disclaimer right now, and that is you are not limited to accessing Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not limited. Tell them, you're not limited. We're not limited by a certain recipe of, 
of a certain building, a certain person, a certain way of, of coming before God's presence. Well, let me tell you this. We serve a God that is limitless. Our God is limitless in the way that he moves, in the places that he'll move, through the people that he moves. Why? Well, I promise you this. If you ask 10 people, 20 people right now, how'd God move in your life? How'd God get a hold of you? How'd God touch you? It'd be 20 different ways. Why? Because my God moves in mysterious ways, and he is limitless in the way that he will touch the body of Christ. My God is limitless, so don't put limits on Almighty God. However, I'll give you a disclaimer. When God gives us something, when God entrusts the body of Christ with a location, with a building, when God entrusts you with a family, with a business, with health, there's certain things that God expects from us. And God expects, when God has given us a place to worship him, that we steward this place. And how do we steward? By operating in excellence. We gotta be excellent in everything that we do. What's the definition of excellence? It's doing your absolute best for Almighty God. And only you know the grading scale for that. Are you giving God your best in your time with Him? Are we giving God our best when we worship Him? You say, what's the whole point of all this? Well, when I began my studies, I thought there would be a different mission for maybe the main sanctuary, you know, for RDC where our youth meets. I thought there'd be a different mission for Kid City parties, for Evangel, for SC Market, for the cafe. So I started this process and then talking to my mentor, my first chair, Dr. David Cooper, he said, Denny, you're missing it. He said, I'm gonna simplify this really quickly for you. Everything the church of Jesus Christ does, every inch of property, every building, every meeting, is for one mission and one mission only. And he said, it's, it's not original to SC Church. It's not original to any church. He said, we follow the mission of Jesus Christ. We're Christ followers. And everything we exist to do is for the mission of Christ. Friends, our mission is not original to SC Church. Whenever you hear to make disciples of Jesus Christ, that's right out of the scripture, my friend. Okay, to go and spread the gospel, that's right out of the scripture. So every facility, everything that you do, everything in your house, everything in your business, you are to arise and to shine and to live, to be a magnet, to draw people to the house of Almighty God. That is why we do this. And through giving your best, giving God everything in your life, God can begin to shape you and bring you to that area. So Today, I just, I'm not gonna go very long, and I just, I wanna pray for you in just a moment. But I had, I had to get into a study, and so every single one of us that were in the doctoral program, we had to have some sort of research and some sort of study. So the limitation to my study and study in you know, sacred places, facilities, is that I did not study every big church in America and all the small ones and the different denominations, but I studied Shreveport Community Church. Why? Because that's my context, right? And I've got to understand how to lead this body of Christ. So I chose a, a church facility within our facility. So I chose Kid City Parties. Some of you have been there and you know about it. Some of you don't. So I'll tell you about it. Kid City Parties, it's a party service and it's actually a birthday party service where kids from the community can come with their parents and family and friends and have birthday parties. It's a big party room, big arcade room, a theater room. And what I did is I enhanced Kid City parties. So by enhancing it, we made the party room better, made the you know, arcade room better. We put signs up inviting people to church the employees, they changed the way that they did service. They made sure they invited people to church, told them this is a church, and said, hey, this is, this is a gift for the birthday boy, birthday girl. 
you come to church, you can redeem it for a gift. So it was all pointed towards the mission of Christ. So after we enhanced kids' city parties, there was six months that we had parties. After six months, we took a survey of all the customers that experienced the changes at kids' city parties. And we asked them questions like this. How was the service? How were the facilities? Would you be more likely to accept an invitation to church? Can we pray for you? All tailored towards the mission of Christ. So after taking these surveys, the results, I was really happy with these results. And one of my, um, one of the research questions was this. And Teddy, you guys, y'all, and Alex, y'all can go ahead and come, I'm closing. Was there an overall statistically significant effect for study participants' perceptions for kids' city party changes since the changes have been made? So in other words, what's the overall effect of enhancing a facility for Almighty God doing our best on expanding the mission of Christ? So in this study that I used, anything over 1.1 is considered a large effect. So when the results came back, my overall score was 5.46, which is a very large effect, pointing towards, you know what, doing our best and engaging what God has given results in building the body of Christ and furthering the mission of Christ. So I'll just give you an example. We called one of the ladies that had experienced a party at Kid City Parties and the changes. She didn't go to church here. She didn't even know, know what we were doing here. But we called her and we gave her this survey, asked her all the questions. And then one of the questions was, ma'am, can we pray for you? Can we pray for you? And right there on the phone, this woman just broke down in tears and began to cry. She said she'd been going through a very tough time. She really needed something extra, something more in her life. And we were able to pray with her. And then we invited her to church. And she had accepted the invitation to church. Now, she didn't just say it, but she actually showed up that next Sunday. And she showed up, she sat through the service, and at the end of service, she gave her life to Jesus. And today, she is serving Jesus. So I just want to show you, by operating in God's best, by doing what God has called us to do, it resulted in a woman giving her life to Jesus Christ. And I just want to turn it to you today. And you can stand to your feet. And I'm about to pray for you. Everyone stand to your feet. I want to give you one last disclaimer. My God is not limited in the way that he can move into your life. God is limitless. God is limitless. But in the course of our life, when God gives us something, God expects us to be stewards of what God has given. So we've got to be excellent in everything that we do. We've got to give our best. And when we give our best, we get in a posture of surrender and we say, God, I want you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I want you to lead me with your Holy Spirit. And understand this, we never come into the house of God, into the presence of God, reluctant, just giving God our leftovers. I would never give God something that cost me nothing. So today we go to a new step and a new level with Christ. And some of you in this place, you've been limiting Almighty God. You say, I just got, I got to get my life right before I really step out. I'm not in the place to be able to really do this God thing. I've gotta get some things in order. Let me tell you, that's so backwards from the gospel because the gospel says in your mess, in your clutter, in the worst times, you invite Jesus into your life and he transforms you from the inside out. Stop limiting Almighty God. 
No longer in the name of Jesus will you limit Almighty God. The second thing is this. Some of us are great Christians, but we've been reluctant in the way that we serve Almighty God. We come in this place and we leave and we have more critiques and more complaints than gratitude for the fact that we can even gather and there is a body of Christ. And if that happens, we've gotten into a place of convenient Christianity. In the name of Jesus, SC Church will not be a convenient place, but will be a place that give God our best. We give God our best in everything that we do. So some of us need to give God our best and others, you just need to surrender to the Holy Spirit. You just say, you know what? I want to give God everything today. I want to give Him my life. I want to give Him every aspect, an all-encompassing love. And I promise you this, if we get to that place, we're going to experience God individually, and God will transform our lives. But corporately in this place, it will continue to be just like it has been for decades, for so long with Pastor Rodney, with Pastor Denny, with us, with our children, with our children's children. This will be a location, as long as we gather here, that exalts the name of Jesus and we give God our best. Come on, bow your heads with me right now. I wanna pray with you, but before I do, I just wanna, I wanna have a moment of salvation Some of you in this place, God is moving on your spirit because you have been limiting God. You don't even know what God is capable of. It's time for you to give God your life. That's what time it is today. It's time for you to give God your life right now. Today, if you say, I'm sick of limiting God, I'm sick of living a limited life where every turn you go, it's a no, it's a closed door. But serving God opens doors in your life like you can never imagine. Every place you set your foot, it's a sacred location. So today, if you want to give Jesus your life, if that's you, every head bowed, every eye closed, raise your hand right now. If you want to give Jesus your life, if you want to give Jesus your life right now, come on, raise your hand right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, right now. I'll wait one more moment. If you want to give Jesus your life or rededicate your life, Thank you, Lord. Everyone, everyone pray this prayer after me. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you're the Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. I love you, Jesus. I want to serve you in every step that I take. Help me to never be the same. God, I just pray over my friends today in the name of Jesus. I pray that your presence will fall in this place. And God, God, I pray that your love and grace will fill us like never before in this location right now. God, as we gather, where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in this place. This is a sacred place. So God, we, we celebrate you right now. Thank you for visiting us today, God. Thank you for being with us in this place, in this sacred place. But God, I pray over my friends that have been limiting you. God, they're stuck. And they're going over the same things over and over again in the same locations, the same circumstances, the same situations. In the name of Jesus, be unstuck. In the name of Jesus, take the next step. It's time for the expansion of your life. God wants to enhance your life and expand your life like never before. In the name of Jesus, receive this. You are not stuck anymore, but you will walk towards God, and your grading scale will be that no longer you will offer God things that cost you nothing, but you will give God your best. In the name of Jesus, we will give God our best in our time, in our talent, in our treasure, and we'll walk towards God with everything in our spirit. In the name of Jesus, receive that right now. You're going to your next. In the name of Jesus, receive that. You're going to what you've been praying for, to what you've been asking God for. It's time for your expansion. This is your expansion year. Arise and shine and take the expansion of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that you fill my friends with the Holy Spirit today in this place 
So they're not limited to a location, but the Spirit of God will be with them in every area, every place they step, every place their foot lands will be theirs, declares the Lord in the name of Jesus. And today, God, we're thankful for the gathering. God, I thank you that we're not oppressed. God, I thank you that we have the freedom together. God, I thank you that we even have a building that's dedicated to you. God, we have so many things to be thankful for. But God, I pray for my friends that a new love and a new life, a new gratitude, God, will arise in us to understand what you've given us. And God, from that, we will have strength and confidence and courage to walk towards you in the expansions of our life together, never claiming the glory, but saying the best is yet to come. God, we thank you. I just want you to think of Shreveport Community Church now. I want you to think of all the things you've experienced here. Let's pray a prayer of gratitude for this place. God, I, I just thank you for this location that you moved on the heart of Pastor Rodney Duran all those years ago to purchase this place. God, I thank you that so many of us have experienced the presence of God in this location that's dedicated to you. God, I thank you that Pastor Denny, when he renamed this place Shreveport Community Church, he understood that community is the strongest weapon we have to fight the enemy. God, I pray that we'll be a community that together will make a difference. God, thank you for the moments that I've had in this place. God, thank you for the moments I've experienced your presence right here at this altar, right on this stage, that my children and my children's children will experience your love and grace. God, we're thankful for what you've given us. But now we proclaim we're going to do our best. We're going to operate in excellence. And we know that the best is yet to come. Right now, I just want you to receive it. I want you to look heavenward. And I just want you to say to God, God, I receive that. Say it right now with everything in your heart. Say, God, I receive that. Say, God, I claim it. God, we receive it. And God, we claim it. We step into our next. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, come on, give God some praise in this place if you love him. Come on, we can do better than that. Give God some praise in this place if you love him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.